Christians ought to be the happiest people. You know, because the joy of the Lord is our and righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is God's kingdom. So we can spread happiness to other people. Please, may I encourage you to become a contagious person. Con contaminate people with joy, with the joy of the Lord. Now they said one of the reasons people are unhappy in the world is anger. Is anger. I mean, there are other factors, but one of them is people harboring anger. And I think that is true. If you're angry, if you harbor anger, bitterness, resentment, you will not be a happy person. You won't be a happy person. And of course, people become angry for different reasons. But one of the reasons is if somebody says something to you that is unpleasant, some, somebody does something to you that, that is hurtful, you become unhappy. You become unhappy angry and uh, we from time to time are hurt by someone and I, as I speak about this as I, I talk about you know what the Lord has laid on our hearts you know to talk about this weekend maybe somebody has hurt you this morning maybe somebody has said something maybe somebody did something to you this week maybe they said something to you last night maybe your spouse and you're unhappy it does happen however when people we love when people who are close to us say un unpleasant things to us did do bad things to us it is extremely painful isn't it Yes, we are deeply hurt when somebody we love, when somebody who is dear to us says something unpleasant or does something unpleasant to us. For example, you know, if, if you're rejected, if you're hated, if you're humiliated, or somebody who loves you plots your downfall, it will extremely wound you. Andrew, who was uh, the leader of the discipleship program I attended some years ago at Youth with a Mission, was deeply wounded when his, his father, one night while the family was having, having dinner, looked at him and pointed his finger at him and said to him, Andrew, you don't belong here. You're not my son. And Andrew, for years, carried the pain of rejection from his own father. A young lady called Winnie, with whom I interacted re recently, shared a story of how her mom attempted to abort her at seven months because she did not want to disappoint her family. And it's, only, it's not only that, that, it's not only what her mom tried to do to her that hurt her deeply. Even the people who uh, kind of adopted her hurt her by the things that they kept telling her. They kept telling Winnie, you look different from us. That means you don't belong to us. You are not a part of us. These are people who actually raised her. I could go on, go, on, go on and on sharing examples of wounded people, people who have been wounded, people who have been hurt deeply by their loved ones because of what they say to them or because of what they did to them. You see, it's not only people like you and I who are not treated well by someone sometimes. And by the way, we also treat somebody unwell. We, we, we also hurt somebody sometimes. I sometimes hurt my wife. I sometimes hurt the people I work with. Our Lord Jesus also experienced the cruelest treatment from his own people, the Jews and the Romans who ruled the Jews, from the time Jesus was arrested, in fact, from the time he was betrayed by one of his disciples, 
and he was arrested and eventually crucified. Jesus was subjected to extreme suffering. But while hanging on the cross, Jesus did the unusual thing, the unimaginable, the unthinkable, the uncommon, the unpopular. Luke records that when they came, the people who arrested him, the people who sentenced him to death, to, cruci to crucifixion, to crucifixion, when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So the unusual, the uncommon, the un unimaginable, the unthinkable thing, the unpopular that Jesus, unpopular thing that Jesus did was to pray, Father, forgive them. Forgive my tormentors, for they do not know what they are doing. Friends, to help us appreciate the significance, the weight of Jesus' prayer, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We want to look at who Jesus asked God to forgive. And before we look at who Jesus asked God to forgive, here we are starting teachings on Jesus' last words. The last words that he said on the cross. That is our new series as we get ready for Easter. As we prepare for Easter. To remember the death of Jesus on the cross for us. And this prayer that Jesus made, that, that Jesus offered, it's one of the last things that he did. It's one of the last statements that he made. It's one of the last words that he uttered on the cross. So who did Jesus ask God to forgive? Judas, who betrayed him and guided the Roman soldiers and Jewish officials to arrest him. Pilate who gave in to the demand of the priests and crowd to release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. By the way, Pilate did that to please the crowd, to appease the crowd. The crowd that shouted, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Roman soldiers who stripped him, spit on him, and tortured him. Criminals and people passing by. <laughs> You'd think people passing by had nothing to do, would, not, would have nothing to do with torturing Jesus. But even people who were passing by hurled insults at Jesus. And then religious leaders who mocked Jesus. Think of it. Think of the torture that Jesus was subjected to. Think of the persecution Jesus went through. But despite the injustice, abuse, mistreatment, and torture he suffered, Jesus, instead of retaliating, chose to pray for his tormentors to be forgiven by God. That is uncommon. That is uncommon. That is rare. That is not popular. I don't know about you. <laughs> when I'm insulted, when people say nasty things about me, oh, when people injure my reputation, when people do evil things to me, my inclination as a human being, human Calvin or Ule, all right. Forget about the pastor now, but the human 
Calvin or Ole. My inclination is to fight back. My inclination is to say, who do you think you are? I'm not a doormat <laughs> to be stepped on by you. You cannot trample on me. I will show you who I am. I will show you what I'm, I'm made of. That is my inclination. I'm not talking about you. That's not you. When people do wrong things to you, you celebrate. <laughs> I know. You rejoice. In fact, you tell people, do it again. Do it over and over. No problem. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome to do it. You're welcome to say all those nasty things about me. But why did Jesus ask God to forgive those who did evil things to him? Why? It's a very important question, isn't it? Why? It is because Jesus was full of compassion. He had compassion. I tell you, God is a compassionate God. And to be compassionate means you act kindly or mercifully towards somebody. So Jesus prayed for those who did horrible things to him out of compassion for them because they did not know what they were doing. It is important to know that Jesus showed compassion for his tormentors. That is, he acted kindly and mercifully toward them. Not because they were not guilty. They were guilty. <laughs> but the heart of Jesus went out to them because they were ignorant of the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. They were ignorant of the fact that Jesus was the Son of God. They were ignorant of the fact that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us, who had come to save them and the entire world. Peter, while preaching on the crowd, uh, while preaching to the crowd, rather, that gathered to witness the healing of the crippled man, crippled man in Acts chapter 3, told them, friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. I want you to realize that throughout his ministry on earth, Jesus showed compassion to people in different circumstances. He was full of compassion. For example, at one time, when he looked at the crowd, he was filled with, com with compassion for them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. We serve a God who is compassionate. We believe in the Lord, in the King of Kings, who is compassionate all the time. You see, like Jesus, we need to have a heart of compassion for people who, ha who hurt us or who have hurt us and who will hurt us. By the way, if you have not been hurt by somebody, somebody is going to hurt you. Yes, you don't need a prophet to tell you that. But Jesus wants us to have a heart of compassion for people who hurt us. And if we are kind and merciful, because that's what it means to be compassionate, we will not hold a grudge against people who hurt us. We will not cast them. We will not call down fire on them. Even when we are praying. Sometimes when we are praying for people who have hurt us, we are actually calling down fire, the fire of God on them. But we will not cast them. We will not treat them as our enemies who deserve our wrath. Instead, we will forgive and pray for them, irrespective of what they have done to us, because to be, com compassionate, to be compassionate toward people is to be concerned about them, is to care about people. Ladies and gentlemen, behind people who have hurt you is the enemy called Satan. Satan uses people to oppress us. Satan uses people to break our hearts. 
Satan uses people to say things that wound us. So we need to look beyond who has said what, who has done what to me, and look at the devil as the enemy. So as followers of Jesus, we need to emulate his example. Wow. The Lord of compassion. And obey his command that love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. Wow, when we love our enemies, when we love the people who have hurt us, when we pray for them, we act, we behave as the children of our heavenly Father. Now, if we don't pray for people, if we curse them, if we hate them, you know, if we retaliate, then we behave as children of Satan. Let me share a story shared that one of the ladies called Alan shared with me recently about forgiveness. I will read it verbatim. When I was five years old, my dad died and my mom came home drunk every day with a different man. Since we lived in a single room a single room house, I had to sleep outside with my siblings. One day, my mom threw a panga, a machete, at me because I had planned to move to my grandma's home and live with her. Forgiving my mom was a long process for me. But one day, somebody told me to thank God that my mom didn't abort me. I was also told that I was blocking I was blocking God's blessings for my life for not forgiving my mom. From that time, I started looking at my mom in a different light and decided to find out why she did what she did to me, compassion. And I began praying for her daily, telephoning her to check how she was doing, and I forgave her. Somebody might be saying, did it really happen? Yes, it did. She did, by God's grace, she was able to forgive her mom. So Jesus prayed for the people who tormented him, tormented him, who persecuted him, who hated him, who crucified him. He was innocent because he had compassion. Secondly, it's because Jesus knew justice belongs to God. He left justice to God. So he prayed for everyone who mistreated him to be forgiven by his father because he knew God is the God of justice. So he left it to God to repay those who hated and persecuted him. Apostle Paul declares that, rather Peter, Apostle Peter declares that when he was insulted, he did not reply with insults. All right? You know, there are people when they are abused, they look for um, more devastating words. Yes, to utter at the person who abused them. I'm telling you, it happens. But Jesus, when he was insulted, did not reply with the insults. When he, was, when he suffered, he did not threaten revenge. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Perhaps, as we talk about forgiveness today, Jesus praying for those who had hurt him, who had mistreated him, who had tormented him. You're carrying painful memories of losing a loved one. Your loved one was, was murdered in cold blood. Maybe you're carrying the painful memory of losing lots of money, property, or, or a valuable item to thieves, to thugs. They stole it from you. Maybe you feel the pain right now of false accusations leveled against you. And your reputation was injured or has been injured. Maybe you're carrying the pain of betrayal or rejection you've experienced from someone close to you. 
You could be carrying the pain of sexual abuse you experienced as a child, a teenager, or even as an adult. Maybe somebody subjected you to physical torture. You've suffered violence in the hands of a cruel person. Could be your husband or your wife or whoever they are. Maybe you are unfairly dismissed from work. Recently or some time ago, maybe you're carrying the pain of, of, of HIV AIDS that your, your spouse, your unfaithful spouse infected you with. Given the gravity of what has been done to you, you might be saying, I cannot and I will not forgive those who have wronged me. You feel you should, and it's your right to pay them back for their actions. It is not normal to feel, it's not, uh, it's not abnormal to feel that way. And God is not mad at you. God is not angry with you because you feel that way. You feel you should revenge. God is not condemning you because you feel you should re revenge. God looks at you with compassion because of what has been done to you or what was done to you. However, God wants you to leave justice to him. This is what, this is what Apostle Paul counsels us to do. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Maybe you're saying, is that in the Bible? Yes, it is in the Bible. I didn't put it there. I didn't smuggle this into the Bible. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Hey, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Come on now. We don't conquer evil by doing evil. We don't write. We don't correct what is wrong by doing what is wrong. We correct what is wrong by doing what is right. John Piper, American pastor and author, says, to avenge yourself is to say hell is an inadequate punishment. Oh, the cross is an inadequate sacrifice. The cross is enough for us. Let me tell you, Jesus died on the cross so that whoever has, has hurt us, God, is, God will deal with them. Please know that leaving justice to God doesn't mean you don't seek help from the courts of law. For a crime or crimes committed against you. If somebody steals your car, you have the right to go to police. All right? If somebody breaks into your house, you have the right to, you know, to report the case to police. But as you know, sometimes we fail to get justice from the earthly justice systems. One time thugs broke into our house. We were here working serving God's people. So we go back home celebrating what we had done that day. Oh, and we tried to open the door. It could not open. We fidgeted. We fidgeted for 30 minutes, and then it dawned on us somebody had broken into our house. So finally, we managed to open it, and when my wife saw the state in which our house was, she wept. I did not weep. I ran to police. When I ran to police, they told me, no, 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 no. You go to the other police station. So, and it was late at night. So I went there and they told me, come back tomorrow morning. So I went back the following day. And I waited for four hours without anybody attending, attending to me. And there was a guy, a police officer who came to me and said, you, you know, you're my brother. Because he shared the name, the, the, the name with me, you know. Oule. So he said, you're my brother. I will help you. And you know what he wanted? He wanted money. So after waiting for, for, for that long, I approached his senior and said, hey, I've waited here for, long and for, for a long time and nobody is, is, is helping me. So the guy who 
told me I was his brother. I got annoyed and ordered me to get out of the police station. Let, let me tell you, we may never get justice here on earth, but there is a God of justice who will one day, one day, deal with the evil done to us. Let's leave justice to God. Even when justice systems fail to, to, to serve us the way they ought to serve us. Come on, even if you don't get justice here on earth for what has been done to you, what has been done to your family, one day in heaven, God is going to pronounce justice. God is our defender. God is our protector. Come on, God is our advocate. God is our lawyer. <laughs> is God saying something to you this morning? And because God is the God of justice, we, we put our trust in him. He is a just and righteous judge who, who never lets evil go unpunished. Lastly, Jesus prayed for the people who tormented him, who tortured him, who mistreated him, who hated him. Because he had compassion, because he left justice to God. Lastly, because he focused on his mission. See, Jesus came on the mission of seeking and saving the lost and the people who tormented him. Those who betrayed him, those who arrested him, those who, are, who tried him, those who crucified him like a criminal, they were among the lost he came to seek and save. If Jesus had retaliated, if Jesus had revenged against the people who abused him, spit on him, and nailed him to the cross, he would have failed in fulfilling his mission. But he did not fail in fulfilling his mission. In fact, one of, um, um, uh, um, um, one of the last words of Jesus we will look at very soon in this series, Jesus' last words is, it is finished. He said, it is finished. Jesus didn't say he was finished. He only said, he declared that his mission had been accomplished. Come on now. You know, when you finish your work, you say, it is finished. You don't say, I am finished. You say, my work is finished. Precious friend, my brother, my sister, God has a beautiful plan for your life. He wants to use you to accomplish his purposes. And I mean you, you sit here in the lower auditorium. You sit in the balcony and you sit in the overflow. God wants to accomplish his purposes through you. He wants to use you to touch the lives of others, your family members, your friends, workmates, schoolmates, and people in your community for his glory. So don't let bitterness, don't let anger, don't let rage, don't let resentment, don't let animosity to all the people who have hurt you become a hindrance to what God wants to do in and through your life. And may I also say that unforgiveness not only destroys individuals, unforgiveness destroys families, destroys communities, destroys nations. Many nations in Africa have experienced devastating political turmoil as a result of unforgiveness. Bitterness, anger, people not forgiving each other. Oh, Ugandans, may I appeal to you, let's learn to forgive each other. Let's learn to forgive each other. You know, during elections, and I think in 2021, we're going to have elections. I'm telling you, you know, we tend to become enemies of each other. No, just because somebody has a, political, a different political affiliation, that doesn't make them your enemy. Let me tell you, we are brothers, we are sisters, we are one people. Let's learn to forgive each other. And church, let's promote the, the culture of forgiveness beginning at home. Are you hearing me? All right. So I'm, I'm ending now. And I want to ask the worship team to come. Worship team, please come. Jesus prayed for the people who tormented him, who tortured him, who crucified him, who humiliated him, who inflicted physical, 
and emotional pain on him because he had compassion, because he, he left justice to God, and because he had a mission to accomplish. So he focused on that mission. Max Lucado, is that the correct way of pronouncing it? Oh, Lucado. Okay. Lucado, Lucado. A Christian author and writer says this. If ever a person deserved a shot at revenge, Jesus did. But he didn't take it. Instead, he died for them, people who heartlessly tormented him. How could he do it? I don't know. But I do know that all of a sudden, my wounds seem very painless. My grudges and hard feelings are suddenly child, 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 childish. Ch child, childish, rather. He says that in the light of what Jesus was subjected to, if you compare what Jesus suffered to what you suffer, then your hard feelings are childish. Mine also are childish. So like Andrew, who forgave his dad, who wounded him with his words, like Winnie, who forgave her mom, who attempted to abort her at seven months, like Allen, who forgave her mom, who almost killed her with a, with a machete. Hey, may I encourage you to take your step of courage, a courageous step to forgive someone who has hurt you. It's not easy. It is difficult. It is challenging. But it is possible. And when you forgive someone, you'll be set free. In fact, Jesus said, if you don't forgive the person who has, who has hurt you, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. It's in the Bible. And at this point, I want you to do something that probably you're uncomfortable with. Take a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can ask your friend to give you a piece of paper. Or you're on your phone. Write the name or the names of the people who have hurt you. You need to forgive. Do that right now. Write the name of the name, the name of the person or the names of the people who have hurt you. And begin asking God to help you forgive them. Begin asking God to help you forgive them. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your spirit is here. And you give us ability, you give us strength, you give us the courage to forgive the people who have hurt us. To forgive those who have used us, taken advantage of us, abused us, mistreated us. Oh God, irrespective of what they have done to us, we choose to forgive them. We choose to release them. Right now you can begin you know, um, 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 uh, saying to yourself, I forgive so and so and, and name that person. Name those people. Begin doing that right now. You don't need to do it aloud, but you can do it quietly. You, you name that person and say, I forgive you. Maybe they are no longer here, they are dead. You can forgive them. You can release them. Don't have a bitterness toward them. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. 